Wonderful viewers, welcome to Science and Spirituality. Today we continue our discussion with the thoughtful scientist featured on last week's episode, Dr. Mario Beauregard, an associate research professor in the departments of psychology and neuroscience at the University of Montreal in Canada. Dr. Beauregard is known for the 2008 book, The Spiritual Brain, a neuroscientist's case for the existence of the soul, which he co-authored with journalist Denise O'Leary. Before joining the University of Montreal faculty, Dr. Mario Beauregard did postdoctoral research at the University of Texas, USA, and the Montreal Neurological Institute of McGill University, Canada. Dr. Beauregard has received international recognition for his pioneering work on the neurobiology of mystical experience and was selected to be among the 100 pioneers of the 21st century by World Media Net. Dr. Beauregard says that the current scientific view of the world, with the exception of quantum mechanics, is still very materialist in nature. And in the neurosciences, the mind and consciousness are seen as merely the result of electrical activity and chemical reactions in the brain. However, this perspective cannot explain many experiments which have clearly shown that thinking and intentions not only can change the brain, but can also change the condition of the body. We know that the brain is connected to all the other physiological systems in the body, like the immune system, the endocrine system. So it, this means that when you change something at the mind level, for instance, a belief, you will influence not only the brain, but all the other physiological systems connected, for instance, the immune system. And this has been shown very convincingly uh, in a scientific discipline that is called psychoneuroimmunology, uh, which started about 30 years ago. And uh, now there's also some evidence showing that we can also change uh, the expression of some genes uh, involved in various types of behavior. So we don't know the limit yet of this influence, but it seems that the body and the brain uh, are very plastic, very open to this sort of psychic, psychological uh, influence. There are cases of uh, uh, remission of cancer uh, that are seen uh, when people use uh, visualization, mental imagery, meditation, uh, various relaxation techniques. If you have a different alternative paradigm in which um, the mind you really exist and cannot be reduced to the brain, then uh, it makes sense to understand that um, perhaps um, the informational processes at the mind level, for instance a thought, can um, influence uh, brain activity. Uh, we can explain that there are models about this and one possible explanation is that uh, it would be based on uh, quantum processes processes related to quantum physics because if you take the case of the um, ionic channels in the nerve cells, the, the neurons, where the messengers um, are passing through, uh, these um, ionic channels are so, or small holes are so small, so minute, that at that size of order, the laws of quantum physics do apply. Uh, the fathers of quantum mechanics realized about 80 years ago that the observers could influence uh, the behavior of the microphysical system that they were measuring, uh, the, the subatomic particles, uh, if you will. They now recognize that uh, human consciousness can influence uh, the physical world at that level. Metacognition can be described as thinking about thinking, or an awareness of one's cognition, and is seen as a way to affect transformation of the brain. Uh, a number of brain imaging studies showing that, uh, for instance, uh, patients suffering from uh, clinical depression uh, or obsessive compulsive disorder, when they start meditating and doing what we call metacognition, which is uh, to take a distance from your own thoughts, your own beliefs, your own emotions, then it's possible to change the functioning of the brain. You really can change uh, the way uh, certain brain structures function and brain networks underlying all sorts of negative emotional states. Thomas Kuhn, a famous epistemologist, 
and historian of science from the United States, is known for his famous theory on how science advances. Rather than it being the product of accumulated knowledge, he suggested that progress is made when paradigm shifts occur because the basic assumptions within the ruling theories of science change. We really need a major paradigm uh, shift um, in neuroscience especially, and also psychology and psychiatry. We're going to uh, collect in the next decades uh, some empirical data and evidence, new data, showing that you cannot reduce really the, the mind and consciousness to, to brain activity. And eventually that, that will lead to a new worldview for humanity. I'm uh, now participating in a, an international research project that is called uh, Project AWARE. And it's conducted across various hospital centers around the world, uh, mainly in the United Kingdom, uh, United States and Canada. And the goal of this project is to demonstrate that when there's a state of um, uh, clinical death and uh, during cardiac arrest, there's a possibility of veridical perception of elements. Uh, for instance, I'm beginning a research project here in Montreal. Uh, when we investigate people um, uh, suffering from major defects at the aorta level, cardiac level, and so the, uh, the need to undergo a, a standstill surgery uh, to repair this defect, which is very serious, their life uh, is threatened. And so they are usually uh, clinically dead for about 20 minutes. While they are clinically dead, what we do is we simply uh, display on a big monitor uh, located at about seven feet above the ground and oriented toward the ceiling we present a series of uh, emotionally laden pictures that are changing every 30 seconds. And uh, we do that because we want to see if um, among all the patients we're going to investigate in the next uh, years, perhaps there will be one or two patients who will have uh, an out-of-body experience and who will be able to identify some of the pictures presented on the monitor. When science and spirituality returns, we'll explore how Dr. Mario Beauregard's spiritual experiences inform his vision of a new scientific perspective of our world. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. I've had uh, was a state of cosmic consciousness. I became uh, one with everything that I was uh, living in every human being. I was living in um, every animal. I was also uh, at one with the stars and everything that exists in the universe, really. And I was also connected with the, the source underlying all these levels of manifestation. So that is very, very powerful because after that, you cannot go back to your old self. You, you know that uh, you're not necessarily what you thought you were. Uh, of course, this will change you uh, forever. Welcome back to Science and Spirituality, where Dr. Mario Beauregard has been sharing with us his dream for a new paradigm for the neurosciences which is non-materialist in nature. He now gives another example of how we can reshape the brain by changing our thinking. We've done a study also with people suffering from arachnophobia, spidophobia. And um, before starting the therapy, uh, the patients were not even able to look at colored pictures of sp uh, spiders in a booklet. At the end of the therapy, uh, and we use cognitive reframing, which is you, you change your belief systems uh, with regard to the phobogenic um, stimulus, the, the, the spiders, for instance, uh, then at the end, all of our patients were able to hold in their hands a giant tarantula. And we scanned them twice, before and after therapy. And while we scanned them, we were showing them uh, film clips of spiders in motion. And uh, at first, they've all had experienced a panic attack, but at the end of the therapy, which lasted only four weeks, um, 
there was no uh, reaction in the emotional portion of the brain. Throughout his life, Dr. Beauregard says he has been spiritually connected with the divine and this has profoundly shaped his work. Since my childhood, I've had a series of uh, intense spiritual experiences, mystical experiences. I'm more of a mystical type of scientist and um, I've had very deep um, experiences of cosmic consciousness. In that kind of state, your sense of identity your little ego, if you will, totally vanish. And you become one with everything that exists in the universe, and you become one with the source of everything underlying the universe. And in that state, I realized uh, I am one with the source of everything in the universe. You can call it God. So the soul, for me, is a part, a parcel of that source. And this means that uh, all human beings are divine. There will be a, a, an evolution that will keep going and that uh, at a certain point, more and more human beings will be aware of this and um, it's experiential. It's not a matter of um, reason about it. And you know, philosophers have been thinking about the, these questions for thousands of years, uh, but they never arrived to uh, consensus or satisfactory uh, solution to this problem. It's something that I've experienced and it, it influenced uh, my worldview, if you will, in the kind of work I'm doing scientifically. Uh, I do meditate. Uh, I do contemplation also uh, every day. Um, and the results of my experiments influence um, the kind of spiritual work I'm doing. On the other hand, the spiritual experiences that also influence the kind of uh, scientific uh, work I'm doing uh, right now. So uh, the, the influences come from both sides. In Dr. Beauregard's book, The Spiritual Brain, he writes the following regarding the awakening of humankind. The development of this type of consciousness is absolutely essential if humanity is to successfully solve the global crisis that confronts us and wisely create a future that benefits all humans and all forms of life on planet Earth. We asked him to further elaborate on this deep statement. Spiritual experience of oneness is certainly the, the key that will allow human species to uh, be able to overcome the, the global crisis that we now face, to become much more uh, civilized, much more peaceful, uh, and. Um, that the, this experience can lead us to another level of um, evolution in terms of consciousness, definitely. For Dr. Beauregard, part of this realization that we are all one means that harming animals and consuming meat comes to an end. Because uh, animals are, uh, you know, living creatures with consciousness. I cannot imagine to have to kill another um, living uh, being uh, to, to feed me. It's something that uh, I think when you, uh, where you when you're rendered at a certain stage in, in terms of your own uh, consciousness evolution, it's something that you cannot do uh, anymore. And I know a lot of people who are quite spiritual and they cannot eat uh, meat. I think it's something that is normal at a certain point. And, uh, We would like to convey our appreciation to Dr. Beauregard for taking the time from his busy schedule to speak with us about his pioneering work in the neurosciences. We look forward to more good news from his research team as they continue to explore the many secrets of our universe and human potential. For more details on Dr. Mario Beauregard, please visit mapageweb.umontreal.ca forward slash boregm forward slash index underscore en dot htm. Books by Dr. Beauregard are available at amazon.com. Blessed viewers, thank you for your company today on Science and Spirituality. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News. May the consciousness of all beings on this planet elevate ever higher with each passing day. For more details, please visit 
www.suprememastertv.com forward slash SS.